in the last lesson we talked about hard drives. Um, that's one way that we store data and the primary way we store it for our operating system our applications. We have lots of other ways that we store data as well. And a lot of them you guys are probably familiar with, so should be a review for most of you. So the first one we're going to talk about is flash memory cards. So these are electronic chips that retain the memory even without electricity, and they're very durable. Uh, we use these in things like our digital cameras, digital media players like MP3 players, and USB thumb drives. Essentially, it's like what we built solid state drives out of, just smaller, and um, these came out way before they did. They're not nearly as fast as a solid state drive, though. Most common formats you'll see is like SD, mini SD, or micro SD. Your cell phone probably uses a micro SD card if you have additional storage for your Android phone. Uh, some desktops and laptops have card readers built into them. Uh, if you don't, you can use an external one like this one here. It would plug in through a USB port and it would give you the choice of using any of 30 or 40 or 50 different types of, SD, of uh, memory cards because there are a ton of them out there. Essentially, when they started out, there was two or three companies that started and they had their own competing standards like Sony had their um, was it Memory Pro, I think is what they called theirs, Memory Stick uh, is what Sony called theirs. Uh, and then you had people who had Compact Flash and other ones like the SD standard, some like the XD standard. And as you can see in this picture, there's all sorts of different size and formats. The technology all works the same way though. It's a type of memory that you can basically put in or take out. Um, and these days, SD kind of became the de facto standard that most people are using. So our flash memory, we can also use this as a thumb drive, right? So with a thumb drive, we've kind of replaced floppy disks. So those of you guys who were in school 10 or 15 years ago probably were told, hey, you had to have a floppy disk to st store all your data when you did your typing class or your computer's classes. Nowadays, we tell all of our kids, bring a thumb drive, right? Um, they store a lot more information and they're a lot more durable. Uh, these things can be really, really large. Um, According to our textbook, they're up to 128 gigabytes in size. I can tell you there's some now that are up to a terabyte in size. Um, these things have gotten extremely large in size. Uh, not physical size, but capacity size. The physical size is still very small, um, the size of something on your keychain. They come in all shapes and sizes. They've got cute ones like the Lego ones. Uh, when I lived in Japan, we had Hello Kitty ones. Um, or you have just the bland ones like I showed you, my little green one like here down at the bottom. Uh, you don't need a card reader. These just plug into any USB port because the card reader is already built in through that USB port. Uh, the file system that they use is either FAT16, FAT32, or XFAT file systems, and they're ready to use right out of the box. We'll talk more about file systems later, I promise. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover that again, so don't worry too much about that yet. And again, to, make these, all you got, to use these, all you got to do is plug into a USB port. It's recognized by the computer, and now you can start copying, deleting, or modifying your files. And the nice thing is you could take them with you anywhere because they're really small. Optical drives. So we've, talked the we've said the term optical drive several times throughout the course so far as we've talked about hardware. Uh, and anytime you hear optical drive, it's just the general category that encompasses CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. All three of those. They're just different formats of disc, uh, but they're all considered optical because they use a, a, a visual uh, way of reading the data uh, either laser or infrared light. Um, each one has different storage capacities based on the different wavelength they use. CDs use infrared, so they have a very long wavelength, which means they can store less data. Um, the bigger the wavelength, the, the less data that can fit in a certain space. Uh, DVDs use a red laser, which has a medium wavelength, and Blu-ray has a short wavelength using a blue laser, which is why it's called Blu-ray. And just a picture of that is on the left. You can see the larger CD has a bigger area being covered, DVD has a smaller area being covered so you can fit more data. And then Blu-ray has even smaller, giving you even more data. For the exam, what you really need to know is how big each of these sizes are. Okay? Not as far as the wavelength, but how much data can be stored on these different things. So I'll give you an example here. So if you look at a CD, um, like the CD you put in your car or a data CD, they can hold up to 80 minutes or 700 megabytes worth of data. Okay, 80 minutes of audio or 700 megabytes of data. A DVD, on the other hand, we have single layer and dual layer. They can hold 4.7 gigabytes or 8.4 gigabytes if they're single or dual layer. Blu-ray, on the other hand, can store a lot of data, 25 gigabytes and up to 50 gigabytes if they are dual layer. So that's what I was talking about earlier with the Xbox One games. They come on a Blu-ray disc, double layer, dual, uh, dual layer Blu-ray disc and it takes about 50 gigabytes of data to store the data from that disk. Okay? Um, 
just to give you an idea, right? One Blu-ray disc can hold 10 DVDs or 71 CDs, right? So you can put pretty much your entire iPod collection uh, on a single Blu-ray disc, right? Really, really big storage availability there. So different types. Uh, in addition to being CD, DVD, and Blu-ray, we have different types inside of there. So if you talk about uh, when we talk about ROM, it stands for read-only memory. So if you have a CD-ROM, a DVD-ROM, or a VD-ROM, Blu-ray disc ROM, um, those are all read-only. So if I bought a game, an Xbox game, right, it comes on a VD-ROM. It's a Blu-ray disc read-only. I can't write to that disc. I can only read from it. If I buy, you know, the new Adele album, it's a CD-ROM. It's only able to be read. I can't write to her disc. If you go to the store, you can buy what's called the Right Once Media, which is CDRs, DVDRs, uh, or BDRs. R standing for writable. Why they used R for writable, when writable starts with W, I don't know. Um, but really, if you want to think of it this way, recordable. Okay, It's recordable. And the thing with this is you can record it once. Think of this like permanent marker. If I have a piece of paper and I write with a Sharpie on it, I can write to it, but I can only do it once. Right? The bottom one there, the ones that have RW, is write, rewrite, okay? And what that means is that I can use a pencil with my paper, right? I can write down my message, erase the page, and start again, and erase the page and start again. And so it was almost used like a floppy disk, okay? Um, the ones that are kind of unique on this, because all the RWs are pretty easy to recognize, the one that says RAM and RE for Blu-ray, this stands for read, erase, is why they have RE instead of RW. Uh, in the old days, for CDs and DVDs, we called it RW, which was read, rewrite. Um, but that, that's the idea. So you can either read once, you can write once, or you can write many, meaning it's erasable. So the way I like to think about that, like I said, is if I buy a book, it's read only, right? If I get a notebook and have a Sharpie, it's write once. If I have a notebook and a pencil, it's write many, it's rewritable. I can write and erase, write and erase as many times as I want. And those are kind of the two big things you want to remember for optical discs is, you know, the fact that you have this read only, write once, write many, and that you have the sizes. Yes, question. So there's two different competing standards. They both store the same amount of space. And when you bought a DVD drive, some of them supported the minus R's and some supported the plus R's. And if I'm trying to remember, but I think the plus R ones could support minus and pluses, but the minuses could only support the minuses. Um, it's not too big of a deal nowadays because nowadays they all are pretty much dual compatible. Um, but back when they first came out and they gave you the ability to write DVDs, uh, you had to specifically buy the right drive and the right disc to go with that drive. Um, but that was 15 years ago. So it's not, not a huge deal nowadays. Um, and, and again, if you have something like a Blu-ray disc, um, it can backwards read DVDs and CDs in it, right? If you have a DVD, it can read CDs or DVDs. If you have a CD, it only reads CDs, okay? So backwards compatibility does exist as well. So how do we measure how fast these drives are? We do it in what's called the X rating. Uh, and the X rating is, it's based on 1X, which is for a CD, what you normally play in your car. When you're listening to music, it's a 1x player, right? And that goes at 150 kilobits per second. Uh, for DVDs, it's how fast a video would play, which actually transmits 1.3 megabytes per second. And for Blu-ray, it transmits at 1x is what you play a video at, is 4.5 megabits per second. The reason why is as we increase the quality, we need to send more data to the screen, right? Blu-ray has a higher uh, definition rate than does a standard DVD, so it needs more data. And that's why these discs are so much larger for the same size movies. Um, the X is just the rating of how fast you read or uh, you can read in these players. When you buy a DVD-R, for instance, uh, or, a DVD, or excuse me, a CD-R drive, because you want to write your own music CDs, you don't want to have to sit there and write it at 1X, right? Because if I wanted to copy uh, a bunch of songs to a CD, I don't have to sit there for an hour while it copies. Instead, I would get like a 52X player, which does it 52 times as fast. So it may take me, instead of an hour, it may take me 12 minutes. Or excuse me, it might take me three minutes to make that disc, right? Um, that way I can do it much quicker. And so if you have a 52X player, it operates 52 times 150 kilobits, which gives you about 7.6 megabits per second. That's how fast it writes, not how fast it reads, right? 
Um, these things on the side, I just showed you a picture here uh, just so you can see that they exist. Um, in addition to having a reader or writer in your laptop or your desktop, they actually make standalone units. Um, for instance, the one on the right there is one that I had in my last job, and we often had conferences. And at the end of the conferences, we wanted to take all of our PowerPoints and burn them to a, a disk to give them to all the participants. And if we had 100 people coming to our conference, and on Friday morning we needed to burn 100 disks, it would take a long time for me to do that with one machine, right? But in this machine, it's basically a photocopier for CDs. I put the source in the top bay. I put destinations. There's five destination bays in it. I hit start, and three minutes later, I have five copies. I hit start. Three minutes later, I got five more copies. And it would just constantly be making CDs for me. It's a CD press, essentially. Okay? I mean, all it's doing is reading and writing it. These type of things also exist for hard drives, where you can put a source hard drive in the first one and destination hard drives in the others, and it will just copy the information to all the hard drives. Um, so there's lots of different systems out there. They're called CD duplicators, DVD duplicators, hard drive duplicators, uh, or imagers. Um, but that's the idea of that. And it saves you a lot of time. Okay, an older way that we used to store data was the old floppy disks, right? And you can see here the blue disk there, that's a three and a half inch floppy. That's what most of us grew up in school with. Um, if you're in your late 30s to early 40s, you probably grew up with the five and a quarters, which are that orange disc there. Uh, if you're older than that, you may have seen the old 10-inch floppies, which is that black one. Um, I'm a little too young. I never got to play with the 10-inch floppies. Um, but I grew up with the, uh, the orange disc there, the five and a quarters in elementary school. And then in high school, we moved to the three and a half inch. And essentially what it is, is it is a magnetic flexible media inside. Basically, it's like a plastic sheet of paper, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and it has this tougher plastic exterior on the outside that covers it. Um, in Windows, you always have A and B reserved for your floppy disk drives, even if you don't have a floppy disk drive, which most of us don't have anymore. But Windows still reserves A and B there, and you can't use those for anything else because they save that for the floppy disk. C is usually your primary uh, hard drive, and then D through Z is either network drives or other hard drives. Uh, your three and a half inch floppy, that, what we're talking about three and a half inches is the size of the disk inside that casing. Um, they started out at 720 kilobits, per se, uh, kilobits of storage, which is not very much. Then they went to the double-sided high density, which was the common one, the 1.44. And then over time they got to the extended density, which was 2.88, which didn't really catch on too popular because at that point we switched to better things like jazz drives, zip drives, and then USB. Most people now don't use floppies at all. We use USB for pretty much everything, right? Um, they're smaller, they're more durable, and we can have large amounts of storage size. Um, for instance, the one little USB I showed you guys earlier, that's an 8 gigabyte USB thumb drive. For me to have that much storage with these, I would need 8,000 of those blue disks to make up that one 8 gigabyte thumb drive. Which would I rather carry around, the little green thumb drive or 8,000 floppy disks? Yeah, I thought so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to carry on 8,000 floppy disks. Make it rain in here with floppy disks, right? Um, I always think it's funny if you have kids, go home and ask them what that is, and they'll tell you it's the save icon, right? My, my kids always ask me, I, I brought a floppy disk home from work and gave it to my kids, and they said, that's awesome. Where did you get the save icon from? Um, they didn't realize we actually used these things at one point. They never, they never made that connection that that's what these came from. But that's where, that's where you get that little save icon was to save to floppy disk, right? Because back in the day, that's where we saved things. Um, inside your computer, if you hook these things up, they use a 34-pin PETA cable um, that requires a Burge power cable, which is a 4-pin power cable. I showed you guys back in the power lecture. But again, you're probably not going to have an internal floppy disk, right? Because nobody uses them anymore. If for some reason you need a floppy disk and you don't have an internal one, guess what they make? Floppy to USB external floppy disks. And it just comes with a USB cable that you plug in the side of your machine, and it's recognized as a floppy drive. So you can use those if needed. Um, very, very much not used in modern day, but there are some businesses that still rely on floppy disks because they have old software that they have never upgraded. Um, for instance, in the Navy, our evaluations, our fitness reports, uh, for a long time, up until about three years ago, we, we brought those based on floppy disks. And so when I wrote up my fitness report to give to my supervisor, I had to give him the paper and the floppy disk. And then he would put it in his machine so he could make changes and send it to his supervisor. We didn't send it around by email or through the network. It was all done by floppy disk. 
Um, they finally upgraded the program. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, but that was up until about three or four years ago, that was the way we did things. Um, a lot of small businesses, they're not going to upgrade their software if they don't have to. If it's still working, they're going to still let it work. And so they'll use either a USB floppy uh, drive to, get, to, keep, to keep working. Another thing we can do is what's called tape drives. We talked about this a little bit uh, the other day as well. Um, tape drives are a, remo a removable storage device, and they're great for doing backups with. So these things can actually hold somewhere between 70 gigabytes all the way up to 3 terabytes of space. They look like an old 8-track tape almost. And what they do is they'll usually connect through SCSI, um, although there were some that actually connected by IDE or SATA as well. Um, and they're usually used to back up your servers and back up your data and then ship those tapes off-site for backup. For instance, when I used to work in the Middle East, we were in an area that was kind of contentious for Americans to be in. If we had to leave or if our facility got destroyed by fire or other methods, uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't lose all of our data, right? And so we would ship off our tapes every week to another facility. And that facility sent their tapes to us every week. And so we would, if they got, you know, bombed or caught on fire, we could restore their data. And if we got bombed or caught on fire, they could restore our data and the effort could go on for our business. It's part of our continuous, continued, continuation of operations. Uh, if you move on to Security Plus later on, there's a whole section talking about business continuity plans. And backups are a huge portion of that. Whether you're going to do, you know, hot sites and cold sites and all this other stuff. For A+, uh, if you know that tape drives are used for backups, that's, that's going to get you through A+. Okay? When you get to Security Plus, you'll have to know a lot more of how you do a full backup plan because it's more of a management type of thing. So if you are a technician and you have two gigabytes of, I should say data, <laughs> of data that needs to be backed up from a customer's Windows 7 machine, how would you store two gigabytes of data? What would be the best choice? Should we use a DVD-RW, a CD-RW, a DVD-ROM, or a CD-ROM? A, right? DVD. And why? Because you can write to it, and it's 4.7 gigabytes of data, right? And so 4.7 will fit too. The CDRW I could use, right? But it only holds 700 megs, so I'd have to use three of those. So the best thing to do is use a DVD, right? DVD RW would work for you. 